This video will show you how to start debugging uh, the fish tank monitoring software for your fish tank problem. Uh, so before we actually start debugging, let's take a look at our evidence folder just to make sure that that's set up correctly. Uh, so when you open up your evidence folder, you should have two folders with, within that. Uh, one is downloads, one's logs. Uh, we're going to be working in the downloads folder today, so go ahead and double click on that to open that. Uh, the most important step that you want to make sure that you have is that you have this updates folder unzipped. So right now you notice, <coughs> excuse me, that this folder is uh, zipped. Uh, and then I have one up here that is not. Um, so if you only have the zipped folder, go ahead and right click on it and then go to extract all and then just click this extract button. Uh, I'm not going to do that for mine because like I said, I already have it. But again, if you need that, click extract. Next, if you open up that newly extracted updates uh, folder, you should notice that you have several Python fold files in here. Uh, and these are all of the files uh, needed to run the uh, fish tank monitoring software. Um, one of those files you should have created inside this updates folder, and that is called the start underscore monitoring uh, Python file. Okay, what that file should look like in Visual Studio Code is this. Uh, this code you should have gotten from the miscellaneous text file uh, in the downloads folder. So I'm going to go back so we can take a look at that. So just go back page here. That miscellaneous text file is right here. So again, if you double click on that, uh, these numbers this is all encrypted information, which you should have used your decryption tool uh, and pasted uh, this message in along with the, the public key and the modulus to uh, decrypt those. And what that gave back was the lines of code needed to create this file. Um, so make sure that you create a new file inside that updates folder uh, and then uh, save this as start underscore monitoring dot pi. And then a few of these lines you had to separate into individual lines. I think when you decrypted this, the import lines came like that. So just make sure that you separate those into two individual lines and the same thing with these two. Those two came as kind of one line. So just make sure those are separated like that. Okay. So now we're gonna actually start the debugging process. Before we run our debugger, let's go ahead and just do a normal run of our program. So uh, when you click run, uh, this should pop up with a window that says fish tank monitor, and notice that it says the current status and all factors are okay. If you click on the perform manual check button, you'll notice that it pops up with a status check uh, box, and then it lists several environmental factors and trace chemicals. And notice it says that everything is okay here. So it says pH level, alkalinity, salinity, temperature, and then your chemicals, calcium, magnesium, and phosphates. It says those are all okay. But if you pay close attention down here into your terminal window, you'll notice that we are getting three error messages or three unexpected errors. Uh, but we don't really know where those are coming from. So this is where our debugger comes into play uh, because we know that of our seven total uh, items here, we know that three of them are producing errors. So we need to figure out which which three they are. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And then I'm going to close out of this window. And then we're going to start debugging. So begin that process, we need to set our first breakpoint. And then I'm going to make the breakpoint this very bottom line here that says my tank dot main loop. Okay, with that breakpoint set, go up to debug, and then click start debugging. And then choose Python file as your configuration. All right, that's going to select our breakpoint that we initially created. And what we want to do is we want to click the step into to actually go into the code that is being run from this main loop. So we're going to click that downward step into button. All right, and that did pop up our fish tank monitor um, window like it did previously, except it's behind our Visual Studio Code window. So if you didn't see that pop up, go ahead and go down into your taskbar, click it from there. Uh, and then it, it will pop up. And then what you need to do is just click on perform manual check, just like you did before. You'll notice that it, the window kind of freezes right now because as we're debugging it, it Windows is essentially just freezing this window as uh, we are coding or as we're basically looking at, at the code line by line. So just, just let it um, stay here uh, and then just click on Visual Studio Code to kind of let it run in, in the background, okay? So you'll notice that we're we are at we are at our Python file, our fish tank.py file uh, is where that took us, and we are at a function called monitor. And you'll notice that this is creating a message, which is what we saw um, in that pop-up box that basically listed all of the environmental factors and the chemicals. 
Um, so you'll notice that the first one is just simply saying the title environmental factors, and it goes into each one of those like pH, alkalinity, salinity, temperature, and then it does the same thing for the trace chemicals. Uh, so what we're going to do at this point is again, we know we have these seven things and we know three of them are going to be causing a problem. Uh, what we want to do is click the step over uh, button um, for each one of these line by line and we're going to figure out which ones cause the error to appear. So we're going to pay close attention down here at the bottom window of our terminal uh, and, and just see which ones are, are causing the problem. So we know obviously this one is not since that is just a string that says environmental factor. So we're just going to skip over that. And then this next one, this is our pH one. Uh, notice that we're selecting that one and we're going to click step over just to test. And after we click step over, we'll just look down here in our terminal. And if it was pH that was causing a problem, we'll see it right when we click this step over button. So if we click that, you'll notice we did not get an error message to show up. So that means that pH uh, is working correctly. Uh, all right, our next one is our uh, alkalinity. So we're gonna do the same thing, step over. And you'll notice that we got a unexpected error for that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set another breakpoint here so that we know that when we want to debug this again, um, here in a little bit, we'll come back and we'll take a look and we'll actually go into this code that is causing this error message to show up. Uh, but for now, we know that we have two more that we need to find, so let's go ahead and try to find those. So we're on salinity now, so we'll go ahead and click step over. Again, no error message. We're on temperature. Notice that one gave us another error message, so we're going to set a breakpoint for temperature. And this one is just the trace chemicals message, so skip over that. Calcium, no error. Magnesium, we did get our last error message here, so we're just gonna set our last breakpoint at the magnesium line. And then this one, just to, just for good measure, just to check, again, no, no error message with phosphate, which is what we would expect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to restart our debugging, so click the green restart button. And then that's gonna take us back to our uh, start monitoring file with the, the main loop line that we selected first. And then what we're gonna do is click the continue button to go to that first breakpoint within the, uh, the other file that we, uh, that we set. So that did pop up with your fish tank monitor uh, as it did previously behind the Visual Studio Code window. So just click on it down in your taskbar and then click perform manual check. All right, and then go back to your code. All right, so you'll notice that automatically took us to our, our first breakpoint here with alkalinity. So instead of clicking step over, we're gonna click step into this time to actually go to the alkalinity code to try and figure out what's happening here. So this took us to the alkalinity.py file. So this is responsible obviously for the alkalinity uh, monitoring. Um, and you'll notice that this first selects a line of co code called a try block, which you may not be uh, familiar with. Um, let's start by going through some of the code inside the try block and then I'll explain uh, how a try accept block uh, works once we kind of get to the, the problem that you're going to see here. So we're just gonna click this step into block uh, and we'll just go line by line here to kind of, and I'll describe what's happening and, and we'll try to figure out what the issue is. So in this line, we have a variable here called uh, value one and we're setting that equal to 17. And then we have uh, value two, so we're setting equal to 12. And then we have a list here uh, called alkalines and it looks like it's a list that's being set to the range uh, of these values. So that means that this list we would kind of expect to be uh, the range from you know 17 to 12 to have all you know six of those numbers from 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Um, so if you click step into and notice our variable window over here, uh, you can see value one and value two are being set correctly, but look at what's happening with uh, alkalines. So notice that that is an empty list. So that's potentially uh, the problem that's being caused with this file is that list is not being set to the correct values. Like we said, it, it should be set to, to 12 through 17. It should have all those values in it, but it's empty. Okay, but let's uh, go ahead and keep going and see what happens. So we have another variable here called current and it's set to the function get alkalinity, which we can see is defined down here. So you notice when we click step into, it's gonna take us all the way down. And uh, this is a very simple function that uh, simply says return nine. So this is just to help simulate uh, 
the fish tank and basically it's just the fish tank saying it it has an actual alkalinity value of nine okay so that that variable is just for the current alkalinity all right and then we have the message which by default is just being set to the alkalinity okay which is what we know uh, when we ran our program this is the message that we saw all right so uh, now we go into this if statement that says if current is less than alkalines zero um, current we know is nine but what is alkalines zero well alkalines is a empty list and we're trying to access index zero which is the first thing in the list but there is nothing in the list so this is actually going to produce an error uh, and it's going to cause our program to crash because there there's nothing in our list and this is where a try try catch block comes into play is the program is going to try to do all of this and then if there is an error message it's going to go down into the accept block and it's going to do this instead of completely crashing and uh, and halting the program because we know that it does move on past this because we do see other unexpected errors um, so so at this point right here because it tried to access a item in a list that didn't exist it's going to go down into the accept block which is what you can see happening right now all right and that's where we get that print unexpected error so what's causing this problem the problem is being caused by the list being empty um, so as we can tell the the alkalines uh, list uh, needs to have in, instead of being nothing it needs to have the range from 12 to 17. and uh, to fix this problem if you look in here if you look closely notice value one even when i hover my mouse over it it's saying 17 first and then 12. Uh, these should actually be flipped it should be going from 12 to 17 it should be counting up um, so probably the simplest way to do that is just to simply switch these values so start um, from 12 to 17 so if you change value 1 to 12 and value 2 to 17 they should now be in the correct order so if you notice I guess that doesn't quite update but uh, if you notice uh, that that should make the correct order so let's make sure that we go ahead and save that and then we're going to just restart our debugging so click restart and that should take us all the way back click continue as we did before and then make sure that you click on your fish tank monitor in your taskbar and click perform manual check and then that's taking us to alkalinity as we did previously and we're just going to click step into again and this time i'm going to go all the way down to our list and then you will notice once we go past that list notice in our variable window here we have the values 12 13 14 15 16 and 17. so this seems to be working correctly let's go ahead and keep clicking step into just to make sure that uh, this actually works okay so current was just set to nine message is set to okay so notice we are at this if statement current is still nine but uh, alkalines zero at zero that would be 12 so is 12 or is nine less than 12 yes it is so it should go inside this if statement and it does so notice message is now being set to alkalinity too low and then it returns the message and then it goes back to the monitor function in the fish tank um, so we should see the correct message for alkalinity uh, to actually make sure that you see that click the stop button and then if we go back to our start monitoring Python file, and then we just run that file, don't click debugging, and then you click perform manual check, you will notice now under environmental factors, instead of saying alkalinity okay, it says alkalinity too low. And then the other thing is you'll notice from our run, we get only two of the unexpected errors um, rather than the three that we saw before. So what I want you to do next is go ahead and try to figure out what is happening with the other two problems that we identified before, which were temperature and magnesium. So go ahead and use the same debugging uh, techniques that you saw in this video to identify what's happening with those and uh, try to solve those on your own. Okay, good luck.